look at United Nations. If you can't hear me, please let me know. I believe all of you can hear me very well. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So, and I want you to listen attentively. The topic is very simple. Yes. The topic is very simple. Only if you pay adequate attention. Hmm? And I see no reason you should not pay adequate attention. Uh, Jessica. Jessica. Sir? Sir? You are going to work with me today. So you come late. You are the first to come. You'll be done to take attendance. And you admit all those late comers that come. You put late comers at the front of their names. Starting from uh, Aisha. Okay. So... I'm going to yes. make you a co-host. You are now a co-host. You can do whatever I'm doing, but don't don't disturb me. Be right rubbish. I will deprive you that privilege. So anybody that is coming, you can admit and take that attendance. So I said we are looking at United Nations today as a topic, and as a matter of fact, I want you. So listen attentively. The topic is very simple. I'm going to take you step by step, step by step for your better understanding. The first thing we're going to look at under this is the historical background of the formation of the United Nations. Then next to it, we'll be looking at the principles of the United Nations Organization. Then followed by the objectives of the United Nations Organization. Then I'm going, just going to list the organs. We're not going to work on the organs today. Just to list the organs. Then in our subsequent class, we take the organ one after the other. We look at the composition. We look at the functions. Okay, that's what we're going to do in the subsequent uh, time. Uh, we started the topic, international organizations of weeks ago before the emergency uh, break. Who oh, will remind me the topic we started with? Yes, people. Ah. OAU. OAU, thank you very much. We started with OAU, and from there, we moved to African Union, and I made it known to you that OAU changed to African Union in 2002 when it was officially launched on July 9 at uh, Japan in South Africa. Africa. And from there, we moved to another international organization. Patia, can you tell me the international organization we have looked at after the African Union? The next international organization will Commonwealth. Be Commonwealth, the Commonwealth of Nations. The Commonwealth of Nations. Okay. Look, at, I told you that the Commonwealth of Nations is an association of all ex colonies of Britain, except Mozambique, that voluntarily applied to be a member. And I said the sense of establishing the Commonwealth is to ensure a further relationship among the former colonies of uh, Britain. Okay. okay. Oh, we we'll have done that. Then today we will be looking at thought of it, the United Nations organization, the United Nations organization. One thing I want to bear, I want you to bear in mind is that the United Nations eh, is meant for all independent states in the world. Take note, OAU or African Union was for all independent states in Africa. Commonwealth of Nations, Sanctuation of ex colonies of Britain. Why the United Nations is Sanctuation of what? All independent states in the world. Thank you very much. All independent states in the world. So take note of that as a kind of explanation. They can ask, you may come across it, maybe your civic education. Let me just tell you, I've seen it before. There's an umbrella border of all independent states in Africa. 
is this. You know it's African Union now. The council asked you, the umbrella body of all sovereign states in the world is now what? What would be the answer? Me, me. The umbrella body of all independent states in the world, what would be your answer? Come on, Wales. Hey, only you. <laughs> the umbrella body of all dependent states in the world. Not umbrella body of uh, excluding of Britain. Yeah. <laughs> Prudent, yes. mute yourself. I do who's talk who is who is making noise there. Aisha, turn on your video. Ah. Is that a difficult question for God's sake? Aisha, what is the answer to the question I asked? You yeah, no. You yeah, no, thank you. Nini Femi, what is the problem? I just said it. Eh? I said it. You said common words. No, so it was after that I, I changed it. You need key, eh? Please brace up. Okay? Take note of that. For independent states in Africa, I'm restating this again. For independent states in Africa, we have African Union. For ex colonies of Britain, we have Commonwealth of Nations as association. But for all sovereign states, all independent states in the world, we have the United Nations. Okay. Uh, the United Nations was established in 1945. Hmm? The UNO was established in 1945. And what happened to be the rationale behind this formation? And what led to the formation of the United Nations? What led to the formation of the United Nations? What happened that we have to establish the United Nations? Yes. Why do we have to establish the United Nations? Anybody? <laughs> Why do we have to establish the United Nations? Anybody? Students, I'm going to punish you today for coming late. You don't usually come late to my class. I'm kindly turn your content on your video. Students, Aisha, don't try me. You try me. Eh? Don't like what I'll do to you. Who is answering my question? What is the rationale behind the formation of the United Nations in 1945? Is that a difficult question? In order to ensure the unity of okay. countries in the world. Uh, one, 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 one. It's a Some... Oh, yes, you are, looking, you are telling me the objective now. I'm just looking at this one key rationale. Key rationale. Of League of Nations. Thank you very much. Yes, then. It's here, we are looking at it. I just decided to test your IQ if you're able to deduct from what I'm saying. They can also ask you, take note of this as I'm dishing them out. The objective question. They will ask you which organization what preceded the United Nations. Take note. It's a you tell me question. Which organization preceded the United Nations? What to be the answer, I need me. The question says, which organization preceded, you don't understand English, preceded the United Nations? The United Nations is not the same thing you and know. Nifemi, which organization preceded the United Nations? Wala, dude. Uh, Fatia, 
Can you answer that question? League of Nations. God bless you. God bless you. I'm not asking questions that is abstract. You are seeing it from what I have projected. The League of Nations preceded the United Nations. And the, based on the question I asked initially, I said, what is the rationale behind the formation of the United Nations? Somebody said, as a result of the failure of the world, the League of Nations. And I asked a simple question. Which of nations preceded the League of uh, uh, the, the United Nations? League of Nations, please mute yourself when you are not talking. The League of Nations was established in 19... What? 1919. We had the First World War, 1914 to 1919. As, as a matter of 1918, I mean. As a matter of fact, uh, I'm not going to the history of the second, First World War. That belongs to history. Okay? But the First and the Second World War all started in Europe. So at the end of the First World War, in order to prevent Second World War, the League of Nations was established through the Versailles Treaty. Take note, Versailles Treaty of 1919. Versailles is in France. The Versailles Treaty of 1919 established the League of Nations. And the League of Nations was meant to assess any issues in the world who, that could have led to anything called conflict or war. But the League of Nations failed to carry out its major role. And in 1939, the Second World War broke out. As a result of the activities of the Nazis led by Adolf Hitler. Take note, Nazis, uh, what I call Nazism, led by Adolf Hitler of Germany. Germany caused the First World War. Germany also caused the Second World War. Take note of that. Even when Germany was not directly affected on issues that caused the First World War, Germany escalated the matter and caused the First World War. And Germany was severely punished. That severe punishment was what led to the Second World War. I think there's a lesson for us. As me, I'm teaching you international relations in time of world war now. Eh? I would have made you know to certain points. At times, when it should happen, don't look at it that I want to punish this person to know that what you have done is wrong. When you punish that person beyond reasonable control, that punishment may lead to something else. And that's exactly what happened. The punishment method on Germany after the second, after the first world war, caused or forced Germany to war to embark on the Second World War. Because Germany, the, imp the imposition of a uh, what fine on Germany, Germany wouldn't have been able to pay the money if Germany have, have not resorted in what in causing the Second World War. So please, in most cases, let peace reign. Let us shift ground. There's work called peace through accommodation and peace through limitation. For us to enjoy peace in the world, we need to limit ourselves, we need to accommodate, not by punishing somebody and make sure you take a part of life of that person. So Adolf Hitler became the German leader and he called the Second World War. So uh, we are not looking at the world in recent, but we are looking at the United Nations. Take note of that. I'm just trying to delve into that area for you to know the rationale behind the formation of the United Nations. The United Nations was established based on the fact that the League failed to ensure the peace of the world or prevent the Second World War. Okay? More on historical background. How many, how many of you can tell me the country that owns the four flags I have on this PowerPoint? Yeah, that person going to put them because she can't believe today. Tell me the country that owns the flag here. If you know them, Okay, no, 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 I will, I will not put price. I will not put price. So that some people not go, they will not come and be winning my money anyhow. <laughs> yes, prudence. Number one. Uh, I don't know. Uh -uh. Maybe I need to, I will give you personal assignment so you know me. 
and you submit it to my send it to my email. Okay, okay, okay. I'll try There's only two I know. Okay, and that's tell me, tell England me. and you. Okay, the first England. England. Second. The first in England. USA. USA. Okay, thank you. We are correct. Any other person? Another person? Ooh. And some of you want to travel out too. You don't even know the flag of this country. So, eh? People now want to go and want to go and chatter in uh, China. Want to go and chatter in Russia. Hmm? If third one belong to Russia, okay? Why the last belong to China? Okay? So these four countries, these four countries came together in a meeting held at Dobanto Oaks. Dobanto Oaks, very close to Washington in 1944. Please take note of this strategic plan. So they, 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 they drafted a kind of treaty which will have built a new organization to maintain the war peace. Because they may ask you in objective question UTME, what are the what are the names of the four countries that drafted the treaty that established the League of the United Nations? We have the United Kingdom, the United States of America, Russia. If you see USSR, that's why I put it there, so you know that it is Russia and then China. And at where? Is Dobanton Oaks in USA, very close to Washington, D.C. Okay, that is that they drafted this. Then a meeting was now called. There was a meeting of 50 countries. Take note of that number two. As I'm hitting this point, make sure you I put them, jot them down. A meeting of 50 countries in San Francisco. It's also in USA. And the meeting started from April to June 1945. Where the 50 countries critically assess, they look into the drafts submitted by the four countries, which was drafted in 1944 at the Banto Oaks. Necessary amendments were made. And after this necessary amendment, the treaty was ratified. And the treaty was known as the Atlantic Charter. Take notes. Let me ask you, what bet the, the treaty that bet the United Nations is known as what? The Atlantic what? Charter. Take note of this point that I'm trying to reiterate. There are objective questions in UTME. So June 26, 1945, it was signed by the 50 countries and the United Nations was giving birth to. But it was not launched until October 24, that same year. And it was launched at or oh, in uh, New York City. That New York still served as the headquarter of the United Nations today. And for your information, October 24, every year is known as United Nations Day. It's a question in, the, in your civic education. Take notes. This advantage you have that those, your counterparts in science, they don't have because it's not part of their topic. These are some of the objective questions. They may ask you the United Nations Day. It's observed every what? It's every October 24. Take note of that. And another question you may come across in your UTME is that as at what time Nigeria become a member of the United Nations? And what number does Nigeria belong to? Nigeria became the 99th member of the United Nations. Take note of this. Nigeria become 99th. Let me be careful. Nigeria become 99th member of the United Nations. 
Nigeria become 99th member of the United Nations. Take note, very important. Hmm? Very important. Then, today, how many countries do you have in the UNO as members? Anybody? If you know it, when you resume, come and collect your 500 and to buy Google. How many countries do you have as member of the United Nations now? If you know it, you collect by foreign era or high school. Too. Can I try? Yes. Hundred. No. That is the last I take from you. Any other person? What is wrong with you now? Aisha, Kilo de Ope win your woman. Ah, what a fish. Ah, Mopo, I will win your modena. Kilo de, why is she not smiling? Yeah. Better smile. Yes, nobody. Ah, okay, okay, that money is too small, Abby. Okay, increase it to 1,000. Uh, prudence, what is, what is it? I don't like your mood this morning. Huh? I'm having a headache. Oh, sorry, sorry. Sorry, eh? After the class, just cry, shower, eat, and relax. Hmm? You see now that why it's always good to turn, your, turn on your video. I observe all of you from here. I know my student very well. If I look at your face, I know that, okay, this person, something must be wrong. So, we, there are 193 members. Take notes. That can be your UTMU question. There are 193 members in the United Nations. We have 193 members in the United Nations. 193 members in the United Nations. Take notes. Okay. So that is all about the historical background of the UNO. That is all about the historical background of the UNO. Any question in this perspective before we move to the principles of the United Nations? Is there any anybody did not understand something? If you don't understand any, something in this arena, let me know so that I'll address it before I, go to, uh, if I move to the principles. Okay, no issue, right? You have the button there, there's no issue. You say, there's a button there, say yes, go ahead. Eh? I mean, you don't know how to use all those keys. I ask a question, you move, you don't say anything. So why would I know that uh, I have actually impacted? Okay, I should be doing roll call. Prudence, sorry. Obasunoy, any problem with the historical background? No, sir. Patsia, any problem? No, sir. Okay. Hola, Mide. Any issue? No, sir. Okay. Aisha Kadri, I'm Mr. Emmanuel. To man, to 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 Any issue? Ha. Aki Emi Jessica, the Chinku. Any issue? No, sir. Okola wo, Oba Femi. Any problem? No, no, sir. Turn on your video. Let me see your face if, to know if you are in my class or not. To Muluati, if any problem, you can't let. As we got the historical background. No, sir. Okay. Okay. Now we are going to we are going to the principles, and I quickly want you to understand this. We say principles. We have principle of the United Nations, we have objective of the United Nations. 
and as individual who among you that doesn't have a principle that governs his or her life? Let me see the person. Okay. All of you have principle that governs your life. I want, I want somebody or two to tell me, tell me the principle, one of the principles that governs you as a person. One of your principles. Yes. Aisha, tell me one of the principles that governs your own life. One. Oh. You don't have any principle. Be serious. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Tell me one of. Can you tell us one of the principles that govern your life? Or that govern your relationship with other people? One of the principles that governs... No principles. You don't have principles? Shineke me. What do I want to do and do? Hey! Okay, it means... You, okay, maybe... Uh, let, let, me, let me ask again. Uh, Patia. Any principle that governs your yes, life or your relationship? Do eh? you don't have any principle? I don't have any principles. Hey, you need to Okay. Ni pay me. Any principle that governs your life? Just tell us one. Uh, we should help someone in need. Not we, your own personal principle. So I should help someone in need when this person needs my help. Okay, one of your principles is that you help somebody that is in need. Okay, okay, I accept that because that, that means you are a humanist. Are we? Nifemi, are you a humanist? Eh? Oh. But they have not helped me before. <laughs> okay. Uh, Prudent, can you tell me one of the principles that governs your behavior, your relationship, your anything you do, one of your principles? Okay. Okay, it's good that I ask this question. All of you, today you wake up, you must have principle. Uh, over to Leye. Life is not hard. Life, <laughs> life is not hard. That's one of the principles. That is, don't take life too serious, Abby. Yeah. Okay. That, okay, okay, thank you. Uh, Ola Mide. Can you tell me or tell us one of the principles that governs your relationship with other, your life in general? Don't look down on people. Don't be. Don't look down on people. Don't look down on people, okay? That is, respect everyone, okay? Thank you very much. Bolo I don't have. You don't have? Okay, mm -hmm. now generally, let me tell all of you, you must have principles. Okay? We have what we call policy, and we have, listen to me, we have principles, we have policies. Principles are basic tenets that governs your life. And in most cases, your principles, nothing change your principles. Nothing changes your what? Your principles. It, 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 it can be informal in the way you eat, it can be the way you relate with other. It can be the way you set your goals. For instance, now let me take, let me give myself as, as an example. As an undergraduate in school, one of the principles that governs me then is the fact that I don't welcome female students in my room whenever it is what seven, anything from seven, 
you don't come to my house. And why? That is to avoid any form of temptation. Two, if any of my friends says they need a clear explanation of a particular course that they don't understand, I don't ask them to come to my house, especially the female students. I organize a tutorial for them on campus. That is to avoid temptation. Another principle is that in anything I am doing, God's position should be what? Should, be, should take preeminence. That is God first. That's one of the principles that governs my life. And not to change all these principles I'm telling you. In case of policy, your policy can be altered. Your principle does not want change. As a human being, you must have principle that governs your life. And one that I also have that I also tell you now, which will also help is that I determine who will be my friend. You cannot determine yourself to be my friend. That's one of my principles. I choose my friend. My friend cannot choose me because I look at you. You have the characteristics that I suppose to what adopt. If you don't have such, or will you be a friend that will add value to my person, or a friend that will what that will bring a kind of what? A, 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 a disreputation to my life. It's a certain principle that governs my life. So please, all of you must have principle. It's United Nations that make me to ask this question. And I find out that now some of you don't, you can go after this class, go and research what is principle, what is policy, and how principle help to determine somebody's life. If you want to be successful in life, you must, be, you must have principles that govern your life. It's your principle that will drive your objective. We'll come to the objective of the United Nations now. It's the principle that will help you to what? To set your goals or your objectives in life. If you don't have principle, forget about it. So please, after this class, do that. So United Nations has certain principles. And it's this principle that determines the objective. And one of the principles is that the organization is based on the principle of sovereign equality. What I mean by that is that all nations in the world that are member, they are equal in time of what? Sovereignty. I think you know what sovereignty is. SS1, basic concept of government. Who will tell me what, what is sovereignty? Let's go back to SS1 now. What is sovereignty? Oh. Oh, that is the, okay. I, yes, 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 Jessica. Sovereignty is the ability. This is the ability of the country to be free from external control. Okay, okay, I will say I will say accept that sovereignty is the uh, authority or power of a country to take her internal and external decision without any form of influence. Okay, when a nation is free, just as you have said free from any form of control outside its domain. That's, that means the state is sovereign. So one of the principles that govern is that the United Nations is that all nations are sovereign and they are what equal. You should remember that if you are keeping friendship, as just like uh, uh, Labide said, that everybody should be what seen as what important. If you are keeping friendship or you belong to an association and some people are seen to be big and some are seen to be small, will you be free in that association Hello, we be, we not, you not be committed to that association. That is just it. So, in order to ensure progress, all members should be what? Sovereign, their sovereignty should be equal. But when we are going to dissect United Nations, it's not now, when we go to the problem, you understand that some of these principles are what? They are abandoned. There are some members in United Nations that are big, there are some that are small, okay? Then next year, we have member states are to fulfill their obligation under the United Nations organization in good faith. That is, you should not be forced to do whatever you're supposed to do. But the United Nations should do it under what? Fairness, under a good faith. That, okay, I'm doing this because I see any, something good in it and it's going to help me, it's going to help the world. That is what that means. Then, second, third to reason, 
all, mem all member states must settle their international dispute by peaceful means. This does not have any hidden meaning. It means that nobody should resolve to conflict in time of solving international disputes. If you have issue with your fellow or neighboring states, do not resort to conflict. Do not use force, but apply diplomacy in resolving the conflict. That's what that means. And this one says all member states are refrain from threats or use of force in their international relations. This one, you will see how the life of Donald Trump has what? Has not followed this principle. When you want to do anything in the international system, you don't use force. Employ what? Diplomacy. If favor is a country, then I am a country. I say favor, you are deploying, you are preparing atomic bomb. And favor, and instead of, instead of me to use force on favor to stop preparing the atomic bomb, I need to apply diplomacy. Favor, don't do this thing. If you do it, this is what you are going to cause. Do it like this, do it like this. I'm not supposed to what? Use force. I have to refrain from anything called for because if I use force on you, I, 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 I can, can also send the same force back, and that can lead to what? World War. Then here I say all member states are to promote democratic principles in their respective states. That is, all member states of the United Nations are to practice democracy because democracies we also help to ensure that people enjoy fundamental human rights. Don't forget that the United Nations in 1948 declared universal declaration of human rights. So it's only in democratic state this can be what enjoy and people will have freedom to determine who govern them. Who will explain the last one for me? Who will explain this last one for me? Say the organization shall not intervene in matter which are essential within the most domestic jurisdiction of member states. What does that mean? So I say it again. It's on the screen now. Huh? Mm -hmm. You cannot see what I share. The last okay. point. He said, the organization shall not intervene in matters which are essentially within the domestic jurisdictions of member states. And then she cannot intervene in domestic matters within the country, within the states. In the member states. And uh, that's how the member states. The members, any domestic matter, any national issue hmm, that is not of uh, influence or that doesn't have direct impact in, in, in the world, the United Nations will not intervene. So these are the principles hmm, that govern the United Nations. Just like I told that you must have principle. If you don't have principle, you will be doing anyhow. So this principle now help us to what? to have aims and objective. You will see how the principles impacted on the objective now. One of the objective of the UNO is to what? Please it for me, Akiyemi. Sir? Read one of the objectives of the United Nations. Yes. To promote international cooperation in economic, social, cultural, educational, and other fields. Okay. Don't forget the essence of the United Nations to ensure the world be just like I just said at that time. So, to promote cooperation. And if there's going to be cooperation, if you are bigger than my country, and you are showing that you are bigger than my, would there be cooperation? Eh? There will not be cooperation. So you can now see what I mean by sovereign equality of a state at that time. Okay? The objectives are driven by the world, the principles. Hold uh, on, uh, second point, second objective. To prevent war and maintain international peace and security. Mm. If you are to maintain war, international peace and security, you must respect individual members. You must not intervene, intervene on any matter that is not of your concern. Respect is, the call is what? What is respect called? 
Oh, that is a reciprocal. If you respect me, I will respect you. If you don't respect me, I will not respect you. Forget about my size. I may be big. If I don't respect you and you, 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 you I deal with you, I talk to you anyhow, you can decide to look for other other means. You can join forces with other people like me, permit to come and deal with me. There will not be peace. Okay? Uh, Nipa, me read the second for us and the third one. To settle Which all disputes. Uh -huh. To settle all disputes by peaceful means and eradicate the causes of wars, wars, trade wars. Can you derive this from the principle too? It said all nations should settle their issue what? With what? In peace, in Using diplomacy, not by force. These objectives are what? I'm trying to tell you that this ob the objective of the United Nations are what? Are driven by the principles that govern the United Nations. So one of the objectives is in order to prevent the Third World War is that all nations to make sure that any form of dispute should be what? Set to without any form of uh, uh, force. Use applying diplomacy. Um, Adekoya, part one. Sadekoya here. Okay, Jessica. Jessica. Read the fourth one for Sir? us. Now. Read the fourth point for us. To guide jealousy, the realization of fundamental human rights and freedom for all people. How did the how did United Nations realize this? Me? Yes. Okay, no time to wait. United Nations realized it by declaring universal human rights in 1948. Okay? We are going to look at how United Nations fell with this objective. We are going to look at the achievements of the United Nations. Okay. Um, Prudent, Fatia, the last two. Read and explain it for us. To accelerate the independence of the trust, trust territories. What is a trust territory? I have said it in your class before, even when I have not taught you. I've said it. I, and I said when we get to under the United Nations, I'm going to teach you very well. But I've said it. What's a trust territory? Anybody? <laughs> Jessica, you are lacking your brain, have you? Um, sounds the trial. Oh yeah, yeah, try, it, try, it, try. It. The um, extension British colony. No, 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 no. That is a uh, crown colony. That is crown colony. Okay, trust territory. We'll come across the under trustship council as one of the organs of the United Nations. Trust territory are disputed territories. Hmm? Trust territory are disputed territories, especially taking over by the United Nations from Germany. Mm? Those land that United Nations retrieved from uh, Germany, they are uh, called trust territory. Under the League of Nations, they were called mandated territory, and uh, mandate territory, take note. Under the League of Nations, those disputed territory were called mandate territory. Eh? But under the League of Nations, under the United Nations, they are called trust territory. Disputed land, mm? territory that were retrieved or taken over by the United Nations from Germany. You know, Germany was trying to take over everybody's land, believe that the like, German culture is supreme. That was to led to the Second World War. Okay? So, yes. Mr. Manor, yes. please can you take that trust territory again? I said trust territory are disputed, trust territory are disputed uh, lands. Disputed land retrieved by the United Nations from Germany. Mm -hmm. you no know, Germany over Germany took over those land and United Nations retrieved them from them. So 
you know, it was, for instance, now maybe uh, Prudence and myself we are fighting over Fatia as a territory. And Prudence used force to take over the land from me. When we now had the United Nations, the United Nations now then received that uh, Fatia land, a part as a land from, uh, from, from Prudence. So that land now will not be called Trust Territory. So one of the objective is to accelerate, that is to ensure independence of all land put under the trust, trust under the trusteeship uh, council. As a matter of fact, with, the, with independent of uh, Namibia in 1990, all trust territories have actually gained their independence. Prudent to you. Last point there. To ensure trust relationship between the sovereignty of so I can answer that last thing, your boxes. Eh, member states. Okay, okay member to states. To ensure respect okay. for the sovereignty of member okay. states. Okay. Like that principle that said, like, like if there if there is um dispute in the country, if it is under how do you for sure, the judge influence the the decisions of member states. Okay, that is all member states should be respected, should be given necessary recognition. Hmm? Remember, crisis of a state. Who can realize the crisis of a state for me? One, two, go. One. Permanent. Yes, two. Sovereignty. Definite territory. Uh, definite territory sovereignty, yes. Next. Recognition. 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 Yes. recognition. Government. Government. Yes. Population. Yes. Population. 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 Then we have recognition. So all states must be what recognized and must be respected. That is what that last point is saying. Oh, in order to cap off this class, in order to cap off this class, there are six organs of the United Nations. We are going to read on this to meet. Number one, we have the, the General Assembly, popularly called ONGA. ONGA, that is United Nations General Assembly. Next, we have the Security Council, Dr. UNICEF, that is United Nations Security Council. Then, today we have the Sectariats. We have the Sectariats. Then here we have the Economic and Social Council called ECOSOC. Then we have the Trusteeship Council. This is, this is the organ that manages the trust territory. The Trusteeship Council. Then, we have the International Court of Justice, ICG. So these are the six organs of the United Nations. And this will be our focus in our next class. We'll be taking them, looking at their composition and their functions. Is that understood? So I want to take question from you now, if there's any question. Yes. Uh, that will be the, that will be next week, but we hope that we will resume on Monday. Let's hope we we'll resume on Monday, but it depends on the level of peace in the society. You no. Know? Yes.